Hey everybody, Organized Biology here, and today we're going through blood pressure medications. Remember, blood pressure medications, the goal is to lower mean arterial pressure because your body's really good at raising your blood pressure, not so good at lowering it. So for people with chronic hypertension or high blood pressure, a lot of the times they need to go on one of these blood pressure medications. So as we're thinking through them, I want you to keep in mind the main goal. We need to lower one of these three values, stroke volume, heart rate, or systemic vascular resistance. Those three things were covered in my previous video here, so if you haven't watched that yet, please jump over there first. And these things contribute to blood pressure. So if we lower any one of these, it will lower blood pressure. So let's get started. These are the ABCs of blood pressure medications because check out the letters. We've got two A's and then B, C, and D. So let's start with the first A. The first A we're going to talk about are going to be called ACE inhibitors. ACE, if I can spell the word ACE, inhibitors. Okay, so they are going to inhibit whatever the heck ACE is. In the previous video, I talked about ACE being angiotensin converting enzyme. This is found in the lungs, and it is going to catalyze this reaction of converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So that's the enzyme that does the reaction. And we remember that angiotensin 2 causes a wide variety of things, including systemic vascular vasoconstriction, so the constriction of your blood vessels, as well as aldosterone release, vasopressin release, all of which will either increase systemic vascular resistance due to the narrowing of those vessels, as well as increasing stroke volume by bumping up your blood volume. So if we take a blood pressure medication that inhibits this enzyme, now this process does not occur. Therefore, we don't make angiotensin 2. Therefore, those widespread effects will not happen because angiotensin 1 doesn't really do a whole life, a lot. Wonderful. Now, in order to remember ACE inhibitors, you need to remember that these will like to end in pril. Okay, so one example of a medication will be called lisinopril. All righty, so that's one blood pressure medication, ACE inhibitor. Great. Number two, well, second A. These will be called alpha blockers. As you can guess, they're going to block something that has the word alpha in it, specifically alpha receptors, which are found specifically on the muscular arteries as well as the major veins. And they'll have these little alpha receptors. And these alpha receptors will grab onto a specific stimulus, specifically a hormone. And this hormone is going to be epinephrine and norepinephrine. So when one of these binds to the receptor, what will happen is this vessel will like to constrict and close up. So whenever you have epinephrine in your system, because those hormones are binding to the ACE receptors, it will cause the systemic vasoconstriction. So once again, if we vasoconstrict, we're increasing our stroke systemic vascular resistance, thus increasing blood pressure. So we take alpha blockers. What does that do? It's in the name, right? We're going to block epinephrine from binding with these drugs. Therefore, the blood vessels will stay dilated, therefore decreasing systemic vascular resistance, opening those up, therefore decreasing blood pressure. Wonderful. Now with alpha blockers, these guys will usually end in O-SIN. Make sure you watch to the end of the video because I'm going to give you a helpful tip on how to remember all of those suffixes. So stay tuned. So alpha blockers end in O-SIN. Great. Now next one, they are going to be called beta blockers. So beta blockers, they are going to obviously block beta receptors, which I remember beta receptors are found in the beating heart specifically in the heart muscle tissue. And what epinephrine and norepinephrine does, so same exact hormone here, is going to bind to those receptors. And when it does that, it will increase the amount of contractions and the strength of the contractions of the heart muscle. If we increase the strength of contractions, we're going to increase that stroke volume, right? And we don't want that. We actually want to decrease it, right, to decrease blood pressure. So what do they do? Well, these medications will once again come in, block those beta receptors, preventing that reaction of strong contractions, and therefore the heart will kind of relax a little more. It won't have as strong of contractions, therefore decreasing stroke volume, therefore decreasing blood pressure. Wonderful. Beta blockers, these suckers, will usually end in ol or lol. So like metaprolol is one of them. Awesome. So beta blockers, great one. Next one up, we've got C. C stands for calcium channel blockers. If you don't know this already, you need to. Calcium, calcium as the ion, is a very big indicator of muscle contraction. In fact, anytime we're constricting arteries or beating the heart, it takes calcium, this calcium release inside of the cell in order for those muscles to contract. So thinking about that, if we have our heart muscle, okay, we're zoomed in here. If you look at the heart muscle itself, we'll have these sarcomeres, which remember from my previous video about sliding filament theory, and it's, I'm going to link it right here <clears throat> if you want to watch that, these guys will shorten or contract when calcium is present. Okay, so calcium's present, heart's going to contract. So 
Think about it. If we have a ton of calcium flowing in, ton of calcium flowing in, we're going to have a pretty strong heartbeat, yeah? So this is what's normally happening. Your heart's going to beat really, really strongly. But what we do here is we're going to block some of these calcium channels, just some of them, not all of them. That would be bad. So we're going to block some of those calcium channels, which prevents a lot of calcium. So therefore, we're going to have a moderate amount of calcium in the heart muscle, therefore decreasing the strength of the heart muscle contractions. If we're decreasing the strength of the heart muscle contraction, once again, we're going to decrease that stroke volume, the amount of blood ejected from the heart, thereby lowering blood pressure. Wonderful. Calcium channel blockers. These guys usually end in heme or just eme. All right. So I believe a diazepine is one of them. All right. Last one, D. These stand for diuretics. Diuretics, to diurese means to urinate, okay? So this is going to cause urination. Now, you may ask the question, why the heck does urination cause lower blood pressure? Well, I will tell you. When your blood reaches the kidneys, and about 20% of your blood is in the kidneys at any given point, right? The kidneys' job is primarily to reabsorb as much fluid and solutes as we can. In fact, it reabsorbs about 99% of the fluid that comes into it. That fluid being the blood plasma. Okay, so we're filtering the blood plasma, bringing in 99% of the solutes and water back into the bloodstream, whereas the remaining 1% is excreted out as urine. So think about it. What if we could just alter this just a little bit, just a little bit, that maybe instead of 98% we're getting reabsorbed, maybe we're going to reabsorb 98%, and now 2% is leaving as urine. That means we're going to pee out a little more fluid, therefore decreasing some of the blood volume, right? If we decrease some of the blood volume, we're going to decrease that stroke volume again because we have less blood to pump. So diuretics are all about acting on those kidneys to help urinate out more fluid. There's a lot of different diuretics here that you could use. So there's things called loop diuretics. This usually acts on different sodium and chlorine channels and going in and out of the kidneys. You'll also have aldosterone inhibitors. And you could also have potentially some renin inhibitors and so forth and so on. All of these are going to help basically excrete out more fluid and solutes into the urine. But you have to be careful with these because sometimes if you're losing a lot of fluid, you're also losing electrolyte levels. So if you're a nurse and you're giving these types of diuretics, you have to be really careful about that electrolyte balance as you are giving your patient diuretic medication. Now these diuretics usually end in the suffix thiazide as well as just ide. Alrighty. So if you see those, you know that there's some sort of diuretic. So somebody's going to be urinating a lot on these medications. So before I get to those suffixes and how you can remember all of them, I want you to like this video. This has been helpful. And please subscribe to the channel so I can make great content for you. If you're a prospective nurse, doctor, what have you, I find so much joy making them. So if this has been helpful, once again, go ahead and do those things. Now, how do we remember these suffixes, right? This might help you. This might not. I, my brain works very strange. So let's get through these. So first off, let's go with ACE inhibitors. ACE ends in pril, right? Well, if you know me, fun fact, my birthday's in April. And when I was in middle school, I was a really good tennis player. So I aced a lot of people. I was playing tennis and I would like hit the ball as a serve and I would get the point, but I sucked at everything else. So some people called me ACE and my birthday's in April. Put them together, you've got ACE pril, right? Okay, okay, let me try this next one. So alpha blockers, oh sin. All right, uh, if you are a Christian like me, we know that God is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, right? So alpha, we'll say is God. And God allows zero sin to come into his presence, right? That's why we needed Jesus. So the way I remember alpha blockers is alpha, God allows zero sin, right? So thank God for Jesus so he can cleanse me from my sin. Beta blockers, this was my favorite. This is my students' favorites. End in all or lull. Have you ever had a beta fish? Okay, if you've seen a beta fish working, you see them going like this, and they usually look like, oh, 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 that's how they look, right? They make the sound, oh. So if you imagine beta blockers, imagine the beta fish saying, oh, all the time to you. Wonderful. Calcium channel blockers. Okay, this is a little stretch. Uh, your kidneys. Uh, when you get kidney stones, they are made of, well, hopefully you don't get kidney stones. I don't wish that upon anybody, but they are made of calcium, calcium oxalate specifically. And if you were to pass a kidney stone made of calcium, and it hits piece of glass that they're catching it in the jar, right? It'll make a little ping sound, right? That's how I remember peen or een for calcium channel blockers. Wonderful. Last one. Hopefully this is helpful. Last one, diuretics, thiazides. Okay, so with diuretics, they make you pee, right? They make you urinate. So if you're sitting in class and you really got to go, sometimes it'll just start sliding right down your thigh as you pee yourself, right? So a thigh slide, a thiazide, all right? Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.